The United States and India to share military intelligence, the two nations signing a new agreement to, today. U.S. officials say this new partnership uh, is key because of the aggression of communist China. India has been locked in a deadly border dispute with China for the past several months. The State Department says it will destroy any missiles that Iran tries to send to Venezuela. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro is forming a new military council with help from countries including Iran and China and Russia and Cuba. Well, joining us now to assess the building threats around the globe, KT McFarland. She's former deputy national security advisor to President Trump. KT, good to see you. And let's start first with India and this new deal. It is not a full-blown defense pact, but it is an important step in that direction. Your thoughts about what it will do to deter uh, Chinese aggression, if at all? Look, this is a huge development because for decades, India has always tried to play the middleman, not wanting to offend the United States, not wanting to offend China, not wanting to go in either one direction or the other. But now yeah, this is a pretty clearly pretty clear move on the part of India. And the fact that you have the U.S. Secretary of State, the U.S. Secretary of Defense signing a, an agreement with the Indian leaders, they're clearly saying, OK, America, we're now in your camp. We're now working together with you. I was in Washington last week, Lou, and I met with, um, spent some time with Secretary Pompeo. And he said what they're seeing throughout Asia is a number of Asian com countries coming to them and saying, look, the Chinese are pushing us around. We finally had enough. We really want to have a, a more robust relationship with the United States, and we all want to stand up to China together. And this is what you're seeing. India is a major step in that direction. Is it, in, in your judgment, uh, an appropriate time to build something as robust as the NATO alliance, but in uh, the Indo-Pacific region? You mean a military alliance? Well, um, I think we're not quite there yes. yet, but we're close to there. I think we're, that's the direction that we're heading in. Look, a lot depends on the Chinese. Do they want to play fair? Do they want to play by the rules of the international world order? So far, there's, it seems like they don't. If they do, fine. But if they don't, if they continue to uh, militarize the South China Sea, take advantage of other countries, I mean, they've got troops on the Indian border, they're trying to go to war with India. Then I think you are talking about some kind of a relationship, military relationship, where other countries participate, not just with the U.S. underwriting everything, but others participating as well. Common yeah. defense. It, it seems very clear uh, that China has made its ambitions uh, abundantly clear yeah. uh, and that there is no ambiguity whatsoever. Uh, it means to exert its will and dominion wherever it chooses. And unless the United States and other countries prepare for it, that is uh, precisely what will unfold. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's turn to Taiwan in that regard. There is a lot of chatter, uh, if you will, about Chinese interest in Taiwan at a level we haven't seen for some time. There is also every uh, possibility uh, at any moment, it seems, that China could uh, decide uh, to take on Taiwan. Do you believe that they are at that stage? No. No. I think that what happened at the beginning of the Trump administration, in fact, even before he took the office, he took a congratulatory phone call from the president of, tai of Taiwan, and the Chinese went nuts. They said, well, you can't really talk to the China. You can't talk to Taiwan. They're part of our country. You shouldn't be doing anything with them. And yet the Chinese, they know that if they pushed it to a wartime footing, I mean, that, that's going to destroy their, all their ambitions worldwide. They plan to replace us as the world leader, the global power, right. and reset the rules of order. You can't do that by invading another country. Um, and uh, I want to turn to Venezuela. Uh, it's unclear where th those missiles from Iran might be uh, might mm -hmm. be in the, uh, in the, whether they're moving in the direction of Venezuela. Do you believe they are? And what do you think it would mean uh, if we were to see those Iranian missiles actually make it to Venezuela? Well, there's long been a cooperation between Iranian and Venezuelan military scientists, as well as some economic cooperation. You know, this was the fatal flaw of the Iran nuclear deal. It was about delaying Iran's nuclear weapons development, but it completely ignored the, the one of the most crucial parts of it, which was missile development. You know, a, a nuclear yes. weapon isn't worth much unless but you that, can deliver but it. That and agreement, so that's what, 
We've walked out of it, and we should. But that agreement is at an end, yes. But yes. those missiles seem to be on their way to Venezuela. What happens if they actually make it to Venezuela? I don't think they'll make it to Venezuela. You know, the Cuban Missile Crisis was all about the Russians trying to put missiles in Cuba, and a, and a president of the United States stopped that from happening. This president of the United States, I would think, stops that from happening as well. Iranian missiles to Venezuela? I don't think so. KT McFarlane, good to see you. Thanks so much.